I can't contain it, so I'm just going to go ahead and get this out of the way. This movie is fucking weird. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the new movie called Okja. Now this movie is now on Netflix. It was a big contender at Cannes this year, um, but it just didn't quite win the top prize. So it had a little bit of a buzz around it, so I was pretty excited when it came to Netflix. So what Okja really is, it's a South Korean American film, uh, co-written and directed by Jun Ho Bong, I believe is his name. Um, but he also, uh, made Snowpiercer, which is also, is a really weird movie, but it's actually really good and pretty awesome in a way. Um, but this movie is just another step of weirdness that I don't think I was quite prepared for. Akja also stars Tilda Swinton, Jake Gyllenhaal, Paul Dano, and the newcomer, a little girl by the name of An Si Hyun. The story of Akja is actually about a creature named Akja. Now, Akja is this giant super pig sort of hybrid animal. Um, that's been bred for this specific reason. Um, she's actually raised in this movie in the, the mountains of South Korea by this little girl named Mija and her family. Um, it's Akja's part of this contest that this U.S. company has going on. Uh, it's in much need of PR. They're really down in the dumps right now. Um, so they decide to have this contest of like breeding these super pigs, and the best pig, um, the most like the biggest pig, and the most sort of glamorous, best looking. Um, will be the winner and will get taken to New York and there will be a big celebration and that's where Akja comes in. Uh, the company finds uh, Akja after like I think about 10 years. Um, they come and visit, they see how big she's gotten and how great she looks and they decide to take her to the US. This of course does not make Mija happy. Um, she basically has to chase Akja all the way back to the US and try and figure out how to get her best friend back. Now as I said at the beginning of this video, this movie is really weird. Uh, Jun Ho Bong definitely doesn't take any subject matter that are really easy. He likes to take subject matter that's kind of captivating and a little bit controversial in, I think, a lot of ways, um, and sort of twist them in a way that's really interesting, like he did with Snowpiercer. I thought that was a fantastic movie. Um, Akja is just a little bit out of my weirdness range. I like weird stuff, um, but there's some stuff in this movie that I just feel like was a little bit too weird, at least for me anyway. Um, it's got a lot of great ambitions. I can completely see where it was trying to go and the subject matters that it was trying to tackle. Um, however, it's just told in such an odd fashion, and the cast of characters at times are just so weird, um, especially like Jake Gyllenhaal's character, that it's kind of off-putting in a way. And why this was such a big contender at Cannes, I can see as to why because of the subject matter maybe, um, but I didn't necessarily feel like it was that great of a movie. Um, to be considered as a top contender at Cannes, but then again, I'm not typically the type of person that goes with the popular opinion. Um, I like to have my own opinion, so maybe it was just a movie that didn't quite fit for me. I don't really want to delve too deep into the storyline of this film because it's going to take way too long to explain. There's a lot of different subject matter and things that I think it's trying to tackle, um, and it's going to be a super long video if I try and make that explanation happen. Um, so I'm just going to try and go over the gist um, essentially, the main subject matter that this film tries to tackle is that of like the food industry and animal abuse, which, don't get me wrong, that's absolutely great that it's tackling it, and it kind of tackled it in a really interesting fashion. Um, I just think it was just a little too weird in the way that it was done. Uh, maybe we'll end up as a society going down this road at one point. Um, hopefully not, because it's kind of ridiculous and pretty gross sometimes, um, but I think it was kind of meant to be that way. The way that this movie is sort of evolves is the way that it, you kind of get more and more unsettled as Akja makes her way to the U.S. and you really find out what this whole super pig program was about. And I think that was kind of the intention is that what ha is sort of happening behind closed doors or um, what the good in what may seem like a good intention and something like a good idea may actually have a very dark. Um, like not only past, but like something dark looming in the background that maybe you don't know about that's making that you sort of can't see because they're trying to push forward all this great PR that this is a great super pig and all these great things are happening. Um, but there's a lot of dark things happening in the background. I think that's kind of what they were going for while also tackling, like I said, the food industry, animal abuse, and a couple of other things. Um, but it just was in a way not my kind of movie. And not to say the movie was bad, I just don't think it was my kind of movie. 
As far as performances go, um, the little girl was hands down the best character of the entire movie. Uh, Mija, I don't want to butcher her name again because I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but the little girl was absolutely fantastic. She really sold her love for Akja, um, this basically CG pig in the movie, a uh, CG super pig. And she really sold her love for Akja and really caring about her. And I think she has a great chance to have a really great career. She did a phenomenal job. And I think that she's going to have a really great success in the future. If she's able to act so well at such a young age, maybe she can do just as well when she's more of an adult. Um, as for the rest of the cast of characters, they're just as weird as I think they normally are. Tilda Swinton um, is always a chameleon, um, but she always seems to play like the weirdest character she possibly can. Uh, same thing kind of goes for Paul Dano. He's a little bit more mellow in this movie, but he's still just as weird as... Paul Dano usually is. Um, probably the biggest sort of departure, I guess, not departure, but the biggest um, actor who had the weirdest role, I think hands down has to be Jake Gyllenhaal. There's, he plays like this animal enthusiast lover guy who's sort of working for this U.S. company um, that's part of this super pig program, kind of like a Steve Irwin type, but from the U.S. or something kind of like that. Um, and he sort of has lost his fame, and so he's partnered up with this U.S. company in order to try and get that back and rebuild his image, but he's just so weird in this movie. Um, he has, like, different tones and, like, the way he acts for on camera versus off camera. He's just, like, a really weird character. I think it was kind of maybe fun for Jake Gyllenhaal to play this character. He does weird characters a lot sometimes, but I think he's much better in the dramatic aspect. Um... This one, again, was just a little bit too weird, a little bit too far for Jake Gyllenhaal to go at times. And I think that was part of that off-putting nature is because I do like Jake Gyllenhaal, especially as like a dramatic actor and prisoners and things like that. But this one was just a little too weird. But by far, I think the thing that really put me off the most about this movie was the tone and the way that things sort of evolved throughout the course of the film. This is about a two-hour movie. Um, in the beginning, we sort of start with Mija and Akja off in the mountains of South Korea, um, they're living their lives, they're sort of doing their own thing, and then the U.S. company comes in, takes Akja, and Mija just goes um, kind of ballistic a little bit, trying to get Akja back, um, which is completely understandable. She essentially grew up with Akja as her best friend. Um, but the way that it sort of evolves and the direction it goes, it gets pretty dark in about the halfway, not even halfway, well, as soon as Akja starts getting to the U.S. and starts getting transported and everything like that, this movie gets pretty dark pretty quick, and it's such like a tonal shift that's so abrupt in a way that I feel like towards the end, it sort of just makes you feel that off-putting feeling um, that I think that the director and writers were really going for. That was the whole point, was to have this sweet story of an animal that grew up in South Korea with his family, now has to be transported to America, and there's a lot of dark things that are happening surrounding Akja and the whole reason why she was created. Um, and I think that's, again, what they were really going for, but that tonal shift is so vast and it can kind of happen, kind of catch you off guard at, as to how fast it happens as well as how dark it gets towards the end of this film. Um, and it's just really off-putting. And like I said, I don't think this movie is necessarily my kind of movie. Maybe that's why I didn't necessarily enjoy it as much. I like weird stuff. I like Snowpiercer. Um, I thought, again, that was a fantastic movie, but this one was just a little bit too weird in ways that I don't think I was quite prepared for. I'm not going to say Okja is a bad movie. I just feel like, again, it's not my kind of movie. I felt like the acting was pretty decent, although it was very strange. The story is actually pretty good. I like the bond that Mija and Okja have. I think that's a great story to follow. Um, the things that are happening around them, though, that's a little bit where it gets into the uncharted water, sort of murky and not very great and it's just very dark at times and it's kind of scary too um, because you care about Akja and I think that's a big um, thing that you want me to, and Akja just to be happy and of course all these people want the opposite. Um, so again I don't think it's necessarily my kind of movie. The acting's fine. Uh, story is okay. It's weird um, but I definitely think that's not my kind of movie and for that reason I'm going to give Akja a C-. minus. So guys, those are my thoughts and opinions on Okja. As I said, it's now streaming on Netflix on a TV or mobile device near you, so you can definitely go ahead and check that out. Uh, feel free to watch it if you'd like. 
Um, if you have seen it or if you're planning on see it, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. As well as while you're down there, feel, leave a like if you feel so inclined. Um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. So that's pretty much all I have for Akja for right now. I have a couple of trailer reviews coming up, so be sure you're subscribed. Um, I have like four more videos to do today. Um, so I'm going to be rolling out a bunch of videos very soon. So look forward to those. But that's all I have for Akja. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.